What's up, everybody? Chad Ferguson here, Catfish Edge. So a lot of you guys have asked me about cooking catfish. This is something I've put off for a long, long time uh, because I don't do it really, really often. But I'm going to show you today how I cook catfish. So I've got my fillets here, blue cat fillets. These were all like two to five pound blue cat that I kept and cleaned. I prepped all these last night after I thawed them, cleaned them up really good, got all the red meat out of them cut the mud lines out of them and then this morning I put them in some Shinerbach beer to soak and let them sit for about six seven hours this morning and uh, that just kind of helps sometimes if you if you soak them either in beer some people like to use 7-up uh, that helps to kind of taste uh, take some of the fishy taste out of them once I got my oil heated up here and started um, getting ready to cook I just poured the fillets in some milk and I've let them soak for about 20, 30 minutes here while I'm getting ready to cook. And now I'm pulling them out of that milk and dropping them into this batter. I like to use, sometimes I'll make my own breading. This time I'm using the Louisiana fish fry in the blue bag. I like that just about as good as anything else. And I'm just rolling these around real good here in the breading and I'm gonna drop them in the grease. So I've got my fire disc cooker here. This is just a, a discada or, or cowboy walk or Texas walk. People call them different things. This is just kind of fancy version of one of those. And um, it runs off a of little propane tanks. I can use this for, for cooking pretty much anywhere. And I like to use this because it doesn't take a whole lot of oil uh, to fill this up. So a lot of fish fryers with these real deep pans, you really have to have a ton of oil to uh, fill them up and cook with them. I've got peanut oil in here, and it's heated up to just a little bit over 350. Uh, that way, whenever I drop the fish in there, it won't cool off too much. And I'm just gonna kind of stagger this. You want to try to keep that temperature at about 350 degrees to that oil. And I like peanut oil because it seems like it, it always cooks better. It makes the, the fish taste better. And it's also um, real tolerant to uh, the heat. So I got some more breaded up here. I'm just kind of staggering these out a little bit not dumping them in there all at once so I can kind of maintain my my temperature here and my oil. I like to wear rubber gloves when I'm doing this because it keeps things clean. Makes it a whole lot easier to, uh, to deal with. I can just rip the glove off and start over. But I'm using this. This is a part of the fire disc. This is called the ultimate frying weapon. This is just like a great big shovel. And I can use this to, to scoop all this out. So I'm just kind of putting a little bit in at a time so that grease doesn't cool off too much. And you just want to kind of watch. I got some fries over here. okra, hush puppies. I usually I like to make my own hush puppies. I've got an awesome hush puppy recipe. I'm going to come back at some point and show y'all how to make those, but I was kind of in a rush today and throwing this together, and I just went to the store and bought hush puppies. So one thing I also I like to do whenever I'm cooking fish I like to make sure that I get lots of paper towels in these pans. Kind of help soak up that grease whenever I'm pulling the fish out of the fryer. And I like my fish really crispy with lots of breading on it. So I cut my, my fillets up into to small pieces because uh, I don't like the real big pieces that, that don't have lots of breading on them and all that. That, that Louisiana fish fry breading, man, that, that stuff is like heaven. And uh, 
you know, I like it to be cooked really well through and through and, and lots of breading on it. So I'll cut it in this, these smaller strips when I'm cooking it out of those bigger pieces just because it cooks faster and to me it tastes better as well. You just want to kind of watch whenever you, you know, you drop fish in there. Just keep an eye on it. You know, you want to make sure it's good and brown. I like to make sure it, it, it's real nice and crispy. And then just kind of watch for it to start to float. And when it starts to float and you start to see kind of less bubbles coming off of it, that's when you can tell that it's ready. So I'm going to go ahead and slide a few more in here. We're going to get all this cooked up, go in there, and chow down with all the family. I know they make fancy breading shakers and all that stuff for doing this, but I like to use a bowl. It's the way I've always done it. A lot of cooking catfish is in the prep and making sure that you clean it well, you get all the bones out of it, that you um, wash it really, really well and get all the blood out of it and get that red meat off of it. Oh. It's not a picture. Uh, it's not, it's a, not picture. a picture. Oh, it's a movie? It's a video. Video. Yeah. No videos? No, I'm too old and wrinkled. Huh? I'm too old and wrinkled. No. Well, we just got done having dinner with the family. Fried catfish, okra, hush puppies, french fries, apple dumplings. Excellent. Everything was so good. Hopefully these tips on cooking catfish will help you next time you decide you want to cook up a few fish. Just remember, if you're going to keep some fish, make sure you keep those smaller ones. Put those big fish back. Anything over 5, 10 pounds you want to release. Those are the breeding fish that are going to keep the lakes populated. And, uh, you know, it's okay to keep a few for the table now and then. Just uh, be responsible about it. Practice selective harvest. We're going to go jump in the swimming pool, do a little swimming. Go watch some fireworks, finish the rest of the 4th of July. <clears throat> Thanks again for watching. I'll be back next week. Chad Ferguson, CatfishEdge.com.